the Horn family started their trucking business in 1996. Their main service is transport of goods and mining equipment within South Africa and cross-border. The company started off with seven vehicles doing truck hire and um, the following year, 97, we decided to move down to, yeah, to Spartan and we started the operation here. And ever since we've been growing up, we're running a fleet of over 30 vehicles now, um, ranging from Bucky's up until your Lynx. The Khatlejo Transport Services began operating in January this year, after about two years of planning and gathering finance and resources. Aubrey Marishane and his business partner initially planned on going into the bus transportation business before discovering a gap in cross-border transport. Through interaction with people involved in the trans transport business, uh, we were advised that uh, you know, trucking business is more viable because uh, with bus uh, industry there's a lot of insurance involved, risk of lives, uh, maybe if there's an accident involved uh, with a bus or, you know, so with goods at least they are replaceable, but lives are not replaceable. Marishane says that doing your homework is the one most important thing you can do when starting up any business. I've done a lot of research uh, with regard to the trucking business and uh, uh, through interaction with the truck owners, the ma people that actually manage the trucks. I've also uh, done a lot of interaction with people on the ground, people that work on the ground, the drivers, the loaders, and how they actually weigh their goods and uh, uh, how the, the pricing is done, which goods to carry, which not to, which are more profitable and all that kind of thing. Although Marishane and his partner had been saving up for a while, they still had to apply for additional finance. Once you've identified what kind of business you want to go into and your finances are in order, you need to choose the right vehicle. The first step uh, was to we had to identify the right truck because, as you know, we, the, the market that we had identified was a cross-border one, so we had to identify the right truck, and when we got it, and then we had to apply for a cross-border permit as well, and uh, th those were the initial steps. So in order for you to, for one, to go into international transportation, you need uh, you need a you need a cross border permit and get a tax clearance as well. The first thing you need to do is to obtain a tax clearance, and th that is one of the first requirements. Uh, wh upon obtaining a tax clearance, you go to the cross border road agency based in Pretoria, and then uh, you go with your your truck, uh, the paper, the details of the truck. Uh, obviously, there's a there's the, there's a weight of the truck and uh, the cross-border road agency charges based on the, on the weight of the truck. At the moment, Marishani's truck is transporting groceries to Zambia. He says they transport anything as long as it fits on the truck and they're not overloaded. Now, you may be under the false impression that the trucking business is quick and easy money. You're not going to get profits out as fast and as much as you poured capital in. The biggest challenge was for us is um, finding your own sort of market in the transport industry um, and growing. Uh, basically, you know, to grow, you need to make profits and to make profits in the transport is not so easy. Um, your biggest challenge is your costs, um, increasing fuel costs, operating costs, um, you know, maintaining, uh, maintaining the vehicles and all that is, makes it very, very hard. Um, especially in the last while, um, during the recession, it was very difficult, I suppose, for all the transporters out there. But um, that, that's our biggest challenge, is to uh, acquire all the, the, the cost and still to make a profit at the end of the day. If you're going to start from scratch, um, basically you have to have vehicles to do transport. So that's going to be your biggest challenge to start off with, is to get finance for your vehicles. Uh, today, the finance industry is very, very, very difficult in lending out money. So I would say if you can overcome that and you can start running with your vehicles and keep them busy, then, then you're on the right track. The most difficult aspect of the business once you've started up is contracting clients. Obviously we have to create uh, a level of awareness among our clients and uh, one of the ways that we did was to, to market ourselves, you know, uh, go to, to, to bus owners, you know, those are the people that we used to interact with. And uh, yeah, they are the ones who actually helped us get clients and through word of mouth and referral system where we will incentivize people who, who refer clients to us. And then uh, it, it suddenly it picked up. Uh, we started getting calls, uh, clients needing our service, and that's how it 
it came to be. Strategy is marketing. Uh, you have to have very strong marketing um, structures in place, as well as um, you know, word by mouth. You know, you get a customer that's very happy. He tells someone else, and then so it goes on. So yeah, that's also a big part. If you if you give good service, then people's going to hear about you. It's important for the person at the forefront to be business savvy, particularly in terms of marketing your services. People skills and good communication will take you a long way. For a cross-border operation, you're looking at additional costs like cross-border permits. Such a business also comes with higher risks. Marishane says unexpected costs should not be overlooked. And don't forget the insurance. You, you need uh, backup as well because it's not the, the business that takes off immediately. You don't hit the ground running. You know, it's the kind of business that needs, you, it takes time to pick up because, you know, you first need to establish trust. And then, uh, so you, you, wo you won't expect to make a return immediately. Sometimes it can range up to six months, like in our case. We had to wait for about uh, five, six months before getting a meaningful client, you know. So it's not something that will just take off immediately, but it's got a potential of taking off once you are known in the industry. And capital is also important to sustain the business as well, because you know you need to have enough money on the side to, to run it. Maybe be it there are certain expenses when the truck breaks or it's got certain problems, you, you need capital, additional capital on the side to look at such things. Marishane's immediate goal is to gain a good client base so they can achieve their future goals of, for example, buying a warehouse to store goods. We're looking at uh, subcontracting with other company uh, truck owners and uh, we want to be able to meet all kinds of demands, uh, not a small scale, all kinds, uh, whether it's a big scale or a small scale. So we'll bring other truck owners on board and you know, help them in that regard. And also create job opportunities for the underprivileged. You know. Even for Triangle Truck Hire, who have been around for 15 years, growing the business further is incessant. Our biggest plan at this stage is to not grow fast like overnight, um, gradually is, is our policy, uh, where we can have balance out with um, you know, the customers that, that we have and the vehicles that we need. Um, also, our biggest um, plan for the future would be maybe to expand to other provinces, make them um, up, uh, open up, up uh, other branches, as well as to, you know, increase the, um, our drivers' um, lifestyles as well. You know, we, that's also one of our big policies in the company is to uplift all the people that work for Triangle. Both entrepreneurs say that if you've done your homework and you're passionate and hard-working, the rest is all about patience in this business.